All right, everybody, welcome to another session of Gentle Chair Yoga with Keith Beasley. Uh, my name is Bhati Blumenthal. I'm the branch supervisor of the Putterham location of the Public Library of Brookline. Uh, we wanted to thank you for joining us today. Um, we also wanted to thank uh, our friends of the Brookline Public Library for sponsoring this program um, and programs like it. And we also wanted to thank our uh, community partners, um, Brookline Interactive Group for um, carrying this this program even further than um, than than we can. Um, this program is also being streamed live to the libraries and Brookline Interactive Group's Facebook page, uh, Brookline Interactive Group's YouTube page, and lo uh, local channels RCN and Xfinity, um, Comcast for uh, Channel Three. Thank you. And now here's Keith. Hi, good morning. Sorry, we got a little late start, so, but we'll try it. We'll have a good class anyway. So let's start in mountain pose. And so our mountain pose is, or seated mountain pose, is our foundational pose in, in Hatha yoga. So Hatha means, a Hatha is a type of yoga. Yoga means union or wholeness, some people describe it as. And Hatha is really about uh, the physical part of yoga, which is using the body as a vehicle to uh, unite ourselves, our spirit, our mind, and of course the body all together so that they function all together. And a big part of that is also the breath, the breath. So in Hatha yoga, we like to emphasize two things, or two things are particularly important, posture and breath. So let's, we're going to start with our posture with our seated mountain pose. And notice that the feet are a little bit apart. And that's because it helps to be able to tip the pelvis forward when our feet are a little bit wider than our hips. If our feet are very close together, and you can try this. So sometimes yoga is an experiment. We try stuff and we see what it feels like. I mean, that's part of the yoga process. So when we talk about the physical part of yoga, we're really learning about the differences and what does our body feel like in various things that we do. So if you bring the feet together, you might find that it's a little bit more challenging to sit up when you try to have good posture in this position versus when your feet are wide apart. We have this nice wide stance. It's structurally more like a triangle. And so we're more grounded but not only that, the pelvis can rock forward more. So it turns sideways. So it's important when we talk about posture to maintain the three curves in the spine. We have the lower lumbar curve down here. It goes in. We have the thoracic curve here between the shoulder blades. It goes out, faces that, or goes out that way. And we have the cervical spine here, which is going in. So. We want to be able to have those curves. Those are our natural curves, and that's the way the bones in the spine fit together most normally. If the spine is too flat or too uh, bent, then instead of the bones sitting evenly, we have the discs here, and then the bones sit to, with the disc in between. The bones will be either too pressed on one side or pressed on the other, depending on whether or not you're flat or round. So we always want to have that nice curve. So try feet are apart and then gently press the feet. Gently press the feet. And if it's hard to press them, if it's hard to feel that pressing, try leaning forward a little bit. And then you'll begin to feel the weight coming into the feet. And as you feel the weight coming into the feet, Press yourself back up with your feet so that it's like we're lifting up through the body like this. So try that a couple of times and press down and come back up. And that's the feeling that we want. So we want these uh, the quadriceps here to be engaged when we're seated like this. So this is an isometric contraction. And there's a very tiny movement as I contract these muscles because there's no movement here but in the joints, the muscles can only contract a little bit. And I don't know if you can see it, but 
there's a little, if you uh, contract the muscles, actually, if you put your hands here and you contract the muscles, you'll feel that they lift up slightly and they get firmer. And these are our foundations. So we have our feet, we have our quadriceps here, and then we want to lift the ribs up and at the same time, engage the belly slightly. So on all the all these muscular actions that we're doing, we want to be um, not overdoing. So think about maybe half effort. If you do too much effort, you tense, and then that becomes counterproductive. So we're so we're engaging, pressing the feet, quadriceps are engaged, belly moves back slightly. So you can even think about moving the navel back. You can even find your navel. So this is a useful thing too. Take your finger and poke at your navel like this, and then move your navel back by pressing with your finger. And we want to be able to feel the con slight contraction in the belly here a little bit. And that's going to help support the back. So that's a very important part of our posture is the, the abdominal muscles supporting the back. And then we're going to lift the ribs up. You can even take the fingers and very gently guide the ribs up to give them that feeling of movement. So one of the things that we learn in our yoga practice is that in all, it, to be able to actually engage a muscle or do a movement, we actually have to be able to feel it. If you can't feel what's going on, then, then the brain has no way to tell it what, to, you know, that part of the body, what to do. So, and we don't have any feedback. So we don't actually even know if we're doing it if we can't feel it. So part of our yoga practice is developing feelings in the body, whether it's the legs or even the toes. Let's actually go down to the toes and see if you can lift your toes up a little bit like this. Hopefully you can see my toes. Let me move back just a little. So I'm leaving my feet on the floor and I'm lifting my toes up. Okay, let's go back. So let's press the feet and then lift the ribs, belly's engaged, and allow the chin to come down slightly. So I'm not tucking the chin like this, but I don't want it to lift. A lot. For a lot of people, it lifts up like this. So we want it to be the face looking uh, straight forward, a neutral position. And then we're going to add some movement and breath. So we're going to bring the hands like this, and we're going to inhale up. And then exhale, let the hands float down. So we're following the breath here. So we could do it. We you could have the breath follow the movement, but we want the breath, the rhythmical part of the breath, to control the movement. So I'm thinking about I can pause here for a moment, and then as I inhale, I let the hands float up. And then as I exhale, I turn the palms out and they float down. So I'm going to keep doing this a few times, keeping my shoulders relaxed. I also like, you'll notice sometimes I close my eyes. So when I close my eyes, there's no distractions. Like you might have seen the cat earlier. So the cat's right over near, near the computer. And yeah, he moves around a little sometimes. So it's a distraction a little bit, or can be. So when I close my eyes, I'm not as distracted by anything because I'm not watching. I'm more engaged with feeling. And I'm using just partial effort here, but maybe 30 or 40% effort with the movement, focusing more on the breath. So as I inhale, I'm feeling the belly open. I'm going to move my hands down just so I can point, but keep the hands going in a circle if you can. You can always, so if your arms and shoulders get tired, you can always rest. So that's the other thing in our yoga class is that it's really your yoga class. And I can't feel what you're feeling. Um, but the rule of thumb in yoga is, uh, it's a Sanskrit word. It's called ahimsa in the Sans Sanskrit language. And it means nonviolence. So, you know, if, we, if we're overdoing and we're getting tension and strain or pain, especially, 
we're overdoing and we're being violent to ourselves. We don't want to do that. And so let's go the other way now. So just pause for a moment with the hands in front and take a breath. And then as you exhale, release the hands down. And then as you're going to inhale, I turn the palms up and I inhale and then the hands float up on the inhalation. So there's exhaling, they're floating down, inhaling, they're floating up. So the up and down part with the breath is the same as before, but now because we've changed the direction, the, uh, the hands are together when they float down and they're apart when they float up on the inhalation. Shoulders are relaxed, face and eyes are soft. This is a way that we start to warm things up a little bit. And that's an important part of any physical exercise practice is we need to make sure that we warm up to help avoid any, any kind of problems, to help avoid pain or injury. So, and of course, if, you ever, if you're ever feeling real pain or discomfort when we're doing these exercises, please stop and uh, <clears throat> wait for the next exercise. And let's take a couple of breaths. We'll call this ca a cactus breath because we inhale and the hands, we look kind of like one of those saguaro cactuses. So the hands are swinging open and then swinging back. So we're inhaling and exhaling. And you have a few choices here as to how high the hands are. So you could work with the hands down here. It's a little easier on the shoulders. It also opens the back of the body. The feeling in the back of the body is different versus the hands being up here. Just the elbows no higher than the shoulders. So we always keep no elbows no higher than the shoulder. This one. And then let's try giving ourselves a little hug like this. You might not have had a hug recently, so it's nice. So in lieu of reaching the shoulders, you can also reach the elbows or reach the, uh, the triceps here. So for some people, the shoulders might not be comfortable. So it's okay to wrap yourself around like this. What we're really working on here is that, and I'm gonna turn around so you can see, pardon my back, that when we open like this, the shoulder blades are coming together, the two bones here come together, and when I wrap my arms, they really spread apart. So there's this movement in the thoracic area. That's an area that's often stuck uh, it doesn't move well in a lot of people, especially if you use the computer a lot and you're like this, you, you tend to hunch over and the shoulders come forward. It's very common. We all do it. I do it too. Um, and, we, and we all suffer because of it. So let's sit up nice and tall and take a couple of breaths. So I'd like to start with... Uh, I can start with one ohm. So <clears throat> the sounds that we make in yoga are really yoga for the voice. The vocal cords are muscles and they need exercise in order to, to function properly. So, oh, I, I didn't mention that the back of the chair. So I'm not sitting against the back of the chair yet, um, but I may at some point, but you have a choice. You may wanna use the back of the chair for support to help make it a little easier to lift the spine. So we wanna make sure that we avoid slumping. So this is sort of, this is an exaggeration, but after we sit for a while, we often kind of just slump over. Our muscles get tired. They can no longer support the back. So that's a time where we can either get, so we can either stand up, which we won't do right now, but, or you can slide all the way back in the chair. So we need to give our back a break um, and give it something different. So like right now I'm leaning against the back of the chair. It's actually quite comfortable. Although a blanket, this chair is kind of, it's a wooden chair in the back. So it's kind of hard. So 
A little padding might be good for the back of your chair. And ideally, you've got a chair that is relatively flat. So I'm going to turn the chair so you can see. Since we haven't had this class in a while, I'll cover a little bit more of the, some of the basic things. So this chair is relatively flat here. Some chairs lean back so that the seat of the chair looks more like this. No, no. Not the best chairs because it's hard to sit up when the butts drop back in the chair. So a flat chair is good. So if you don't have as flat a chair as you'd like this time, you can get it for next time. So you can use the back of the chair or not. I'm going to still use, stay forward in the chair for now. And it's a little bit more challenging. So you have to decide which one you want to do. And so we're going to try uh, an ohm. And then I'd like to also do uh, something called brummery. But let's make the sound of ohm. So the ohm sound is actually three sounds. They're strung together one after the other. Just like, it's really just like singing. So the first sound is the ah sound. So please, if, you, if you're if you inclined, please try it with me. So, uh, so you go to the doctor, they want to look in your mouth, they say open wide, and you go ah. And people might, uh, like you're singing. That might be kind of fun the next time you go to the doctor. <clears throat> and then it's um, oh. So notice the shape of the mouth changes from big mouth. This is a ah uh, to the oh. You can even talk for a little bit. Also in front of you. And then the last one, we close the lips, and it's. Mm, you might even feel the vibrations going up into the sinuses. Sometimes it tickles the nose, or even down into the chest and the heart area. So one of the good things about these sounds is the vibrations they create. So vibrations are good for our body. They can be stimulating and nourishing for our body. So let's try that, that sound of OM one time together. So we'll breathe in nor nat a normal natural breath in. Nice to pause after that and just listen to the silence. After we have a big sound like that, everything becomes very silent. Maybe not totally silent because there's other noises, but our mind can become more silent. You know, so that's a nice, uh, some people may call that peace or serenity or um, it's what you might even feel like if you're doing some meditation. Everything becomes peaceful, and it makes you makes you feel better. Makes us feel better. Some of the uh, other stuff in our life becomes it doesn't go away, but it becomes less intrusive. We're not bothered by it as much, and that's a really nice part of a yoga practice. Is that things are still there, but they don't bother us as much. And we're going to do something called brummery. So this is also called the bumblebee breath. And we'll start out, it, I'll just dem demonstrate it once. Imagine there's a bee flying, comes in from this side of the room. As it gets closer to you, it gets louder. And then as it flies out, there's a window over here. As it flies out the window, then it gets softer. So the, the sound get, starts soft, gets loudest, and then gets soft again and disappears. So it goes like this. It's really just like a, uh, kind of like if we'd make the sound of a bee. And the most important part is to do it smoothly with a nice up and then a nice down. Doesn't matter how loud it is and doesn't really matter how long it is. The, the smoothness is what's important. So we're really getting, we're, we're teaching the, uh, the vocal cords better control. And if we do that and we practice over time, 
it gets longer naturally without us actually doing anything. And it gets louder without us doing anything because of practicing. <clears throat> so let's try that a few times. We're gonna do it, uh, we're gonna start together and then we'll do it for about 30 seconds. And when you're finished with one, with one brummery, with one bee, one bee flies by, let another bee start to fly by. And natural breathing. So we're not over, don't, you don't have an ungestuff breath here to start with so you can do it longer. It's a natural breath. That's an important part. If you're, if you're too, uh, if your breath is too big, it creates tension and it makes it actually harder to make the sound and harder to maintain a smooth sound. It also strains not only the body, but the mind is straining to try to do, do it what we would say is right. And uh, that's, that's the opposite of what we want. We want the mind to be relaxed and uh, we want that balance, right? We would balance of ease and effort. So it's a nice balance. One isn't overpowering the other. So let's try it. So we'll inhale. And remember, so we'll go for about 30 seconds. So breathe in. That's a natural breath in. breath in. Sometimes after that, a little sip of water is good too. You may also find that it causes you to cough a little bit or you get a little phlegm from doing it. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, that's normal when you begin. Mm -hmm. So let's... Uh, <clears throat> yes. Did somebody have a question? No, okay. Uh, Let's start by rocking from side to side. So a little more warming up and then we're gonna do all the joints in the body. So if you have arms on your chair, you just need to be careful. Start thinking about lifting the foot up slightly. So when we lift the foot up, I'm just gonna hold my foot up, but you should keep rocking back and forth. We're engaging all the muscles along here, all the side, the, uh, the quadricep, the hip flexors and the, uh, uh, the muscles running up the sides of the body. You also might feel the weight shifting in the buttocks and the sitting bones. So the sitting bones are at the base of the pelvis. They're the bony things that you, if you have a firm chair like this, a wooden chair, you may feel the uh, bones rocking back and forth. And for some people that might not be the best thing to do. So we don't wanna injure ourselves especially if you have any bone issues, you might wanna take even, even just a blanket. So if you have a really hard chair, you might wanna take a blanket and put it there. Something relatively firm though. So you want padding, but not being squishy. So this is actually, <laughs> this feels better than the other way. Um, and then we're gonna add, let's add the arm to it too. Like we're climbing up like we're climbing up. And if you want, if your shoulders feel okay, you can even reach a little higher. This also requires a little bit of balance. If you slow it down a little bit, you'll find that balance even more, or the required balance even more. And it really starts to work the abdominal muscles. So if you lean over and you hold this position and you feel, you'll feel firmness here in the belly. And 
the sides of the body. And that's, a, that's actually good. So remember, if you're back, if you're starting to feel uh, like your back is getting overworked, if there's any back pain at all, make sure you're using the back of the chair when you do this. You might not get quite as much movement using the back of the chair, just because rubbing up against the chair might slow you down a little bit. And then let's come back and let's uh, <clears throat> rock the feet. So we're gonna do all the joints in the body, starting by rocking the feet. And when I'm rocking my feet, I'm lifting the toes up and then rocking all the way back until the heels come up. I'll turn sideways so you can see. I'm rocking and I'm really feeling the bottoms of my feet here. I wanna focus. So remember we talked about Hatha yoga being a physical, getting connected to our bodies so that we can actually feel things. In order to move my toes, I have to be able to feel my toes. If my toes, uh, if I can't feel them, then I can't move them. And the same with the feet. So sometimes we wear shoes so much that it's really our feet don't, we don't feel them very much and the toes don't move very much. So if you want your feet and toes to move better, then try something like this where you can begin to feel, you can begin to feel, and it takes time. This won't happen in one or even two classes. If you practice regularly, you can build up the feeling in different parts of the body that you don't feel so much right now. Uh, it'll probably take weeks. It could even take longer. And then let's add the hands to it. Let's actually let's do the hands first. So we'll practice with the hands like this, opening and closing. And then we're going to do the hands and the feet together. So as I close my hands, the fist I make is a soft fist. I'm not squeezing. It's not like I'm going to punch somebody. So I'm opening, notice how the fingers spread apart, and then I'm closing. If you have discomfort in your fingers, if you have any arthritis in the fingers, try to work so that you're not creating pain. The old adage, no pain, no gain, is not, is not, a, is not taught in yoga. We didn't, we didn't get that from yoga. And actually, you know, creating pain in the body tends to create tension, and tension tends to um, create problems for us. It creates, uh, it makes us not feel well. You know, people who have pain all the time are, uh, you know, it's more, life is more challenging. And then let's add the feet to it. So as we Rock the, as we open and close the hands, start to rock the feet so that as you open the hands, either the heels or the toes are lifting up. So we get to the end of the movement for each one at the same time. So the middle of the movement is the same is uh, happening for the feet and for the hands. And see if you can begin to feel it rather than intellect, think about it. So I'm not thinking about it, I'm feeling it. So we use a different part of the brain. We have an analytical side and then we have the more creative or the more feeling side. So I wanna use that feeling side. And let's go ahead and uh, let's do this. Let's scoot back in the chair. We're gonna do, roll, we're gonna do rolls, start with the ankles. Roll the ankles around and then roll the hand, the wrists around. And then see if you can get them to work at the same time. So they're circling at the same rate. They're circling at the same rate. If you put the hands directly in front of the feet as you're looking down, that can help because then we can actually see. We can kind of line them up as they're going around. Let's go the other way. And see if you can feel the wrists and the ankles. 
once you can, once you see them going around, try closing the eyes and then see if you can feel them with your mind going in this at the same pace. It might not be exactly the same, but with practice actually you get so it's exactly the same. We begin to feel where our body is in space. We call that proprioception. And that's a skill that can be learned. Some people even call it a sense, to be able to sense where your body is in space. Then let's rest and let's go ahead and lift up one leg and then the other leg. So we're gonna do some leg lifting here accompanied by flexing the foot back. So flexing means uh, pulling the, the um, toes back towards the knee. So this is pointed foot, flexed foot, pointed, flex. So when we flex the foot, it has this nice way of uh, stretching the back of the leg, kind of stretches the whole, the fascia, the nerves, everything stretches down the leg and helps to keep things moving back here. And that's what we want. You know, we, we sit a lot and uh, we want things to, we want our body parts to keep moving. The alternative is not a good alternative. To be stiff and immobile is not good. And it's frustrating too. When parts of our bodies don't work right, we, they frustrate us. So, oh, so this is that, so this is point, actually let's just do point and flex on the other foot, I'm sorry. Point and flex on the other foot. And it, this is an important movement because of the flexing this, uh, uh, the flexing of the front of the ankle that can tend to uh, decrease over time with age. So let's do one, we flex the foot back and then down, and then we flex the foot back and then we release it back. I'm not pointing it so much, but I'm not flexing it as I'm coming down, I'm relaxing the foot. Comes up, I flex, I relax and come down. Come up and flex, relax and come down. Come up, flex, relax, come down a few more times. And remember, we want to have a good posture. So if you need to adjust yourself, feel free to do that. Feel free to keep yourself lifted in the chair. You could even, if your chair allows you to, you could even have your hands down here to help lift the spine up here when you do this. It's a little extra, little extra effort. It also does a little bit of work with the arms and the shoulders, but just a little bit of pressing. So I'm not, I'm not trying to lift myself out of the chair with my arms. That's a different pose. We won't do that one today. I'm not even sure I could do it. And let's add the arm now. Let's, let's add the opposite arm. So as I lift up, I'm gonna raise my arm up like this. And I'm going to do the other one. If this uh, if this is your shoulder, try just lifting the elbow up. Oh, so I was going to do opposite. So you could do the same too. So it's your practice. You can decide. What I like about doing the opposite is the depending on the side of the body we use determines the side of the brain that we use. So that when we do one on one side and one on the other, we're actually using both sides of the brain. Think about a connection between the foot and the hand too, almost like a string, almost like the hand. Imagine the hand is lifting up and as it comes up, it pulls the foot up and I'm still flexing the foot when it gets to the top. And then I release it down and then I do the other side. I'm gonna go back and forth like this. You could even work if you wanted, you could work with both hands. It can be a little bit more challenging because when we do both hands, 
any imbalances in the upper part of the body uh, tend to interfere with the uh, one half, with the other half of the body. So it's easier, it's a little bit easier, and sometimes more uh, kind of more fun. That we get, I get better movement with just doing one one side. But if you wanted to, you could try this with two. It's a little more challenging. And we'll come back down. Let's slide forward in the chair. We're gonna circle ourselves around a bit. So we're gonna come back to our seated mountain pose. This time, make sure you have a nice wide stance. And we're gonna to start to circle around. So you can start with the hands on the knees. And then I'm leaning forward leaning forward from the waist. So I'm looking forward so that my back isn't rounding. I'll turn sideways so you can see. So notice I'm leaning forward so that my belly comes down closer to my, uh, my thighs. So I'm not rounding like this. We wanna keep the, the spine extended. That's an important part of this movement is the extent, keeping the spine extended or lengthy axial extension of the spine. So I'm not doing a back bend, but I'm keeping my spine elongated as I circle around. And if you want more of a challenge, you can imagine you're stirring something in front like this. You can even let the hands go to the side like this and go around. So you can vary the arms depending on uh, the condition of your abdomen and your back. Let's change the direction. If you find that your back bothers you from doing this, try making the circles smaller. So sit up more and don't lean so much. You'll still feel the movement underneath. So as I move around, my weight is actually shifting. If I was to draw a circle, underneath me as if I was uh, uh, if I was sitting on something flat. I feel the weight shifting from one buttock to the other, then into one foot, into the opposite foot, into the buttock, into the other buttock. So there's another area where you can feel, you can feel the weight moving around as if my, like when I'm doing my hands like this, the weight, my hands are following where the weight is moving. And then I'm gonna sit up nice and tall. I'm gonna take a couple of breaths, inhale and exhale. And remember to change the cross of the arms when you hug yourself. So the top arm will be one arm for one hug. And then the next one switch to the other arm. So this is the other arm for me right now. And then switch back to the other arm, which is now this arm. And then one more time on the other side and then go ahead and lower down. Let's do the neck. So we're sitting up nice and tall and we'll release the chin down. So the neck is one of these, it's very, we want to be very gentle with the neck. So there's no forcing here moving the neck. I'm just releasing the chin down and letting the weight of the head stretch the neck. And then when I lift it back up, I'm not going too far back. I'm really just looking up slightly. So I'm not doing this, please don't do this. It's very important not to, so you notice that when, it, when you do that, the whole back of the neck gets squashed. We don't wanna do that. We want it to be, feel nice and open. You could even try a little something you could try is if you interlace the fingers like this and put them on the back of the neck for support, you'll start to feel the neck bending. And then you can release it back down. The nice thing about the hands back there is it actually creates this open space on the back of the neck when I do this. So you only want to do this so if your shoulders feel good when you, when you have the fingers interlaced like that. Don't do it if your shoulders hurt. And then we'll stop and just take a breath. And then we're going to tip the head from side to side. And let's, if you want, you can add a pillow to it, hands together like this. And then resting the ear on your pillow. 
this is a really nice, I, li I actually like this. This is very relaxing for me. Especially since it gives this, the, uh, the neck muscles here on the side a chance to rest and stretch. And then we'll do it once more on each side. And again, I'm not forcing my head down. I'm just resting it as if I was resting my head on a pillow. And then I come back up. And then we're going to turn the head. Consider closing your eyes here and going nice and slowly. Thinking about only turning where it feels easy to turn. So it's not... This, this is not about increasing your range of motion, although that may happen as a result of this. It's not, forcing your head over is not probably gonna help you. It's really softening and relaxing the head and the neck enough where it becomes easier. So the muscles in order to turn often need to actually relax in some places. And again, that gets back to that idea of balancing ease and effort. We have to have some muscles that are working and some muscles that are relaxed to do any of these poses. And then come back to the front. And let's circle around. Let's start out. Uh, we're going to hold one finger out like this. We can start with our I'll mirror you. We'll start with our left hand. And start to circle the index finger around. So hopefully you can see my index finger going round. And then I'm going to start to move my wrist around. If you find that the whole arm starts to move, you can actually gently hold the wrist and circle the wrist around. And now we're going to start to let the hand and the elbow turn around. And you could, so if you find the whole arm starts to move, you could also hold the elbow gently here. And let the elbow. So notice when I hold the elbow, my shoulder doesn't really move. And then I'm going to let my shoulder begin to move around. And I'm going to start to make the circles a little bigger. And I'm only going to go so far as is comfortable. So for some people, you might make giant circles. And for some people, you might be like this. That's okay. And then we're going to go back the other way. And then we're going to start to make the circles spiral in so they get smaller and smaller and smaller until only the elbow is moving. So now my shoulder is not moving. Remember, you can gently take the, hold the elbow if you want to stabilize the upper arm. And then the wrist. You know, holding the, the joint is actually a nice way in the beginning. Because sometimes we don't have the ability, you know, as we begin to move the joint, the whole, you know, we often move things in groups, parts of the body in groups, and then we'll do the finger. That finger again. Now let's do the other side. So start with the other hand and begin to move the finger. It doesn't matter which way you start. And go a little slower. You might notice, so I'm, uh, I'm, this is my dominant hand over here. And this one doesn't work as well, the other side. It's, it's more jerky, more kind of herky-jerky with the circles. And then I'm going to do the wrist. Remember, if we're holding the joint like this, we're very lightly holding, just enough to keep it from, give it some stability. And then I'm going to do the elbow. And then I'm going to do the shoulder. So now my shoulder, and I'm going to make the circles get a little bigger. I'm going to spiral out. And then I'm going to start to spiral in the other way. So change your direction and then begin to make the circle, the spiral smaller and smaller and smaller until now it's pretty small. And then I'm going to hold the uh, elbow again to stabilize the elbow. So now just the elbow is moving. And then I'm going to try the wrist. Hold the wrist. Really noticing that feeling of movement in the joint itself. A nice gentle movement. 
And then finally the finger. My, this finger doesn't even want to make a circle. It wants to go like this. It wants to flap up and down. So it goes to show you some, some imbalance. So we all have these imbalances where if this finger goes well in a circle, this finger doesn't go so well. And that's just like, that's the way we are. I always think of the lobster with the big claw and the little claw and how they do, uh, do stuff. And let's see, so we, uh, we're doing all the joints in the body. We did the toes and the ankles and the knees and the hips. We just did the neck and the shoulders and the arms and the elbows. So I think we covered everything. So let's do a few cactus breaths again. So we're gonna inhale and exhale and then inhale and exhale. So we're gonna transition. You have a choice here. You can uh, stay seated or we're gonna stand for a, a few poses. So you'll be able to do these seated or standing. So if you're, we're gonna to come to our mountain pose. So mountain pose seated is as we began in the beginning of the class, it's like this. And mountain pose standing is essentially the same pose with the legs straight. So for this one, if you do have your chair, you may wanna have your chair in front of you. Or if you had two chairs, ideally, you could have one behind you and one in front of you. So I'm gonna move this one to the side and turn a little bit so you can see. A little better. So my feet are a comfortable distance apart here, and I'm going to bend my knees slightly and extend. Bend the knees and extend up as I straighten. Almost like I'm lifting myself up. Almost like I'm lifting myself up. And you can do the same thing seated. So if you're standing, continue to do that, making sure the knees are going straight ahead. So I'll lift this up. So the kneecaps are going in the same direction as the toes. We don't want them to go out and we don't want them to go in. We want them to stay because the knee is a hinge joint. It really only functions forward and back. It's not meant to go to the side. And if you're seated, we're gonna do those isometric contractions where we press the feet into the floor since we can't really, uh, we can't so much straighten the legs here. We press the feet into the floor, but we can still, <clears throat> and let's actually lift one arm up like this. So you might not be able to see my hand up there, but I'm just reaching up and then coming back down. So my arm is lightly extended. My fingertips are lightly extended like this at the top. And we're gonna do, um, we're gonna do a balance pose. So we're gonna do, this is called crane pose. So you might wanna have your chair and you can rest your fingertips on your chair like this. I'll turn sideways so you can see. You can also do this seated. So same thing. So if I'm resting my fingers like this and then I'm gonna lift up my knee like this and then I'm gonna step down. And if you want more of a challenge, if your balance is good, you can just lift up like this. So we're gonna start, this is, in the beginning, it's almost like marching. So if we were to march, actually, let's try marching for a moment. Just like walking, just like marching. Thinking about lifting the knee straight up. So sometimes when we lift the leg up a little higher, the knee goes out like this. We wanna avoid that. We want the knee to come straight up, even if it doesn't come as high. Don't worry about how high it comes. Think about lifting it straight up as if you're gonna step up onto a stair or even onto a curb. And if you want more of a challenge, the slower you go on this, the more challenging it is for balance. So if you, if you are challenging your balance, you may wanna have a chair handy just in case you need to hold on. And if you're seated, so if you're standing, keep going, slowly lifting the, Lifting the knee up, seated is the same, just like this. And it requires some balance too when you're seated because now you've only got the foot and the two buttocks in the chair. 
And if you want a little bit more challenge when you're seated, you can lean over a little bit more. We were doing so, uh, something similar to this earlier when we were rocking, but think about lifting the knee up, leaning over and maintaining the balance now just on this one side. And notice how similar these things are, whether or not you're standing or you're seated. They're not the same, but the a lot of the um, uh, the muscles that we use and the idea of balancing is really similar. And then step down from it and rest. Take a couple of breaths. And then we're going to sit back down. So we're going to start to cool down a little bit. And to cool down, we're going to use that movement that we started with at the very beginning. So as we inhale, we let the arms come up and we let the heart open. So think about, think about feeling what it, what does this feel like now? And see if you can remember what it felt like when you started in the beginning. Hopefully it feels a little more, uh, the movement feels a little easier to you here. It might only be a little bit easier. Sometimes it could be a lot easier. Sometimes after we get moving a little bit and we do some exercise in it, or the movement in the body seems to open things up a little bit. But it also may just be a small amount, or you might not feel a difference at all. Or you might not notice a difference. Let's go the other way. So we'll bring the hands together and then drop the hands and then inhale up and exhale down and inhale up and exhale down. We're gonna find our Shavasana pose, our seated Shavasana pose. And actually I'm gonna put a little padding on the back of my chair like that. It's a little cooler today, so you might even consider a blanket. Or if you have air conditioning in your house and you're cold, a little bit of uh, warmth goes a long way with relaxation. If you are cold, it's hard to relax. I would say it's almost impossible to relax if you're cold because your body, the natural response to the body to cold is to tense and to shiver. And of course, that's not relaxation. So maybe a little cover up, whatever you have, or something light. You could even use a towel if you wanted, or a sweater. You could put, put a sweater on your legs or a sweater on your shoulders. And let's take a few breaths like this. And each time I inhale, <clears throat> I want to feel a gentle lifting in the body, but without too much effort. Really just trying to make sure I'm not slumping here. So there's this gentle lifting. And then as I exhale, I soften, I relax the shoulders. This practice of sitting and just taking a few breaths with the eyes closed, feeling the belly expanding as you breathe in. You could do this any time during the day. Anytime you need a little break, you can even go in the bathroom and do it. Just go in, as if you're going to the bathroom, go in, shut the door and just sit. For a few minutes, take a few breaths, and it's a nice way to calm everything down. Especially since for many of us, it's hard to get outside.
Namaste. Thank you for practicing today. Thank you, everybody. This is Batya Blumenthal, Branch Supervisor of the Putterham location of the Public Library of Brookline. Once again, we wanted to thank Keith for uh, bringing us through this practice today. Uh, we also wanted to thank the Friends of the Brookline Library for sponsoring this program and programs like it. Um, we also wanted to thank our community partners, Brookline Interactive Group, um, for uh, boosting this signal as well. Um, before we leave, I just wanted to make sure that everyone uh, was able to he, um, recognize the disclaimer, participation in this online yoga program could result in injury. Not all exercises presented here are suitable for everyone. These exercises are not intended to substitute for proper medical care or advice. Always consult your physician before beginning any exercise program. The creators, teachers, and producers assume no responsibility for injuries from participation in this program. Thank you so much.